Hi, welcome once again to Senior Focus. I'm your host, Bill Adams. Senior Focus is a show designed for adults over the age of 50 or so, and we come to you a couple times each month on Armstrong's Channel 20 and 100, and we thank uh, Greg Roten from Armstrong Cable, who brings the show to you. Also, thank you to the Austin Town Library that allows us to use their uh, meeting rooms. And today we're going to be talking with a very interesting gentleman. Uh, his name is Robert Bishop. Mr. Bishop is a uh, 75th, well, it's coming up on the, oh, it is the 75th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, and he's a veteran of Pearl Harbor and World War II. And his story is uh, quite an amazing life story, and we'd like to welcome him to the show. Thank you. Uh, now, I know that uh, you just recently got back from a 75th anniversary. Yes, we did. And uh, you want to describe, I think you went with your family, but you could talk about the trip, if you would. Well, my, I don't get around very well, but my youngest daughter and her husband said, well, if you would like to go, we'll take care of you. Mm -hmm. And so we did, and uh, got on an airplane to Pittsburgh and changed to Denver. That plane we got on at Denver was the biggest thing I ever saw. <laughs> it was a 777-200, whatever that means. It was huge. And uh, of course, uh, when we got on there, there were several other Pearl Harbor survivors got on. And I really don't know how many uh, was there for the uh, celebration. Uh, I would suppose uh, neighborhood of uh, maybe 75, uh, from what I can observe. Mm -hmm. uh, that celebration was worldwide. We met people from all over the world. Mm. Uh, from Malta, uh, a reporter from Malta wanted to interview me. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> and we met people from uh, New Zealand, Australia, China, Japan, Canada, in the United States. Mm -hmm. I, I would suppose it was probably about 5,000 people gathered on that pier for the, uh, the speeches and the celebration. Mm -hmm. uh, it was pretty well attended. I, uh, I, I, I was surprised that there were so many people there. Well, we went under uh, Sons and Daughters of Pearl Harbor Survivors. Uh, they had set up for a national reunion, and so we took advantage of, uh, and my, my daughters belong to that, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and so do I. As an associate member, even you can belong. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, well, now you do. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, I don't think it gets you any place except uh, <laughs> T it takes fifteen dollars of your money for <laughs> the year, um, so we met some of these. Well, you probably read this article uh, in the paper recently about uh, Don Stratton. I think uh, about his situation. He was on the uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Arizona was right at the start of Tennessee. So we took a lot of uh, fire, and so Don was on the Arizona at that time, and he was a member of the crew, and he was trying to get off because the fire was terrible. And somebody from the Vestal saw him uh, struggling to find a way to get off and threw him a hand line. And so hand over hand, hmm. he went about, I think he said around 75 feet, mm -hmm. and uh, was burnt. They said over 65 percent of his oh, body was burnt, burnt terrible. But I, when I talked to Don, he he looked pretty good, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, of course I think he's 95, and I'm 96. I'm I got one year on him. <laughs> well, isn't today your actually your birthday? Today is my birthday. <laughs> well, congratulations. Happy well, thank birthday, you. too. It took a long time to get there. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, this was a much different uh, scene than 75 years later. It was celebration, and uh, people were happy to you know, see each other again. Yes. But if you go back 75 years to that day on December 7th, 1941, 
that was a completely different day. Um, and could you just describe uh, where you were uh, prior to the attack and, and sort of walk us through well, what happened to you personally? Can we back up just a little oh, bit? Oh, go ahead, sure. On December the 6th, um, there's a, the, the bands from the battleships and the Battle of the Bands. Okay. So in that evening, we were at the Block Recreation Center. And uh, now Arizona did pretty well. And, uh, you know, they were all allowed to sleep in. Okay. Because they, they did well in the band. Uh, yeah. Not a one of them survived. Oh, no. Uh, Arizona lost 1,177 mm. in less than nine minutes. Oh, no. And, uh, of course, uh, I wanted to get that part in there mm -hmm. that they were all allowed to sleep in. And just well, the, fa the fate, the way uh, bad luck or just the way things happened. Well, yeah, yeah. it was just un unusual that, and, and they took the worst beating of all the ships there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was well, right next to you, though. I mean, it was just one one ship away from the Tennessee. Yes, astern of the Tennessee, uh, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 feet. Uh, the, and it burned terrible. The explosion was so great in the bow area of the uh, Arizona that it broke the keel of the ship and raised the bow section two feet out of the water. Now that's a lot of steel to raise that section out of the, out of the water, and I I was talking to a man who he said I saw it. He says I I know. He said you could see plenty of daylight between the bottom of the ship and the water. Mm -hmm. it, it's almost hard to believe. Well, uh, now I don't know the man from the vessel threw this hand line over to uh, the, uh, I, I guess it was sort of about in the uh, midsection of the Arizona. I don't know how they managed that, but uh, fortunately it, it saved several lives. Uh, several guys uh, crawled out the hand line, hand over hand. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I, I, it just uh, was a remarkable feat. Uh, if you uh, get a chance to read the book that Don wrote, uh, it, you find it very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, now, my battle station was within the bowels of the ship. Uh, it was called the main battery plotting room. Uh, when the general alarm sounded, I was in my living compartment, which was uh, would be the second deck down, and I only had to uh, run about 15 feet and make a turn, slide down a ladder, and make another turn, slide down another ladder. But you didn't walk down, you slid down. Yeah. You get down there real quick. And when I got to the bottom of the uh, second ladder, I uh, went into the compartment where we controlled the firing of the main battery. Uh, then uh, almost uh, immediately watertight integrity is set, so no air, mm. uh, no water either, uh, we hope. Yeah, you're, you're hoping that this <laughs> and, maintains, uh, yeah. The compartment's all sealed off, but that happens throughout the ship, the water and tight integrity is set uh, very shortly after general quarters is sounded. Uh, it got, well, I think it was about 15 people on my station mm -hmm. uh, with the computers and uh, uh, means of firing the, the main battery uh, by direction of, of course, the, the captain and through the gunnery officer down through plotting room officer and, and then I fired main battery. so. Uh, when it's when we're ready to fire, I have to make sure the the guns are ready or I don't fire. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, in this case, we didn't 
for our main battery, although we were told to train out because they thought that the Japanese might make a landing at a certain point. And we, we did t uh, train out and was ready to fire if, if there was a landing. So there was, so, there uh, was no landing. So while you're there in the airtight or watertight compartment, again, it's getting hotter, right? Oh, yes. Very, very much so. The and perspiration was so bad that the deck got wet. We mm. used a swab to wipe up the perspiration on the deck. And that, that's hard to believe. So you can hear all this going on, right? You oh, could hear and everybody you, can, you had, could feel the blasts. And everybody things. had telephones. Mm -hmm. And you can, uh, you can hear entirely what's going on. Somebody in that room knows what's going on everywhere aboard ship. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you could feel the shock uh, of, I don't know, whether it was near misses or when the bombs hit us. Uh, one bomb hit us on a, a forward turret, number two, is split the left-hand gun barrel. And so the, the bomb must have hit the gun barrel and bulk of that bomb flew over onto the West Virginia and killed the captain of the West Virginia. Oh, now, now he had just stepped out of what he, they call a conning tower Mm -hmm. where he would con the ship during battle. Mm -hmm. And it, it was a heavily protected tube, I don't know, maybe about 14, 16 inches thick, I don't know how heavy it was. And the door was just, open, uh, just big enough to let a person through. Mm -hmm. Well, if you saw the movie Pearl Harbor, you saw the captain of the West Virginia dying in the arms of a black man. and. Uh, then the other bomb uh, hit our turret three and after turret, went through the top of the turret into uh, one, uh, which let's say you, you have three sections because of, of the three guns. Mm -hmm. it, it came down in one section and I can't remember which one, but uh, it killed three people immediately. Oh. And we had one man killed by strafing, and of course one man was killed by the bomb that hit number two turret. And so we only lost five people, which isn't many if you weren't one of them. Yeah. And uh, uh, we were fortunate in that sense because um, most of the ships lost more than five. Uh, well, course, again, as you, as you said, the Arizona, they lost over 1,100. 1,177 right? in less than nine minutes. Mm. Uh, of course, uh, Maryland was in front of us and it took a bomb in the bow. Uh, of course, when the West Virginia sunk, it rolled up against Tennessee and we were pinned in. Uh, we, we couldn't move until several days later. Uh, they bombed away part of the moorings and and we were towed into the uh, uh, shipyard. The fire was so intense that the heat penetrated the hull of the stern area and things were burning inside the ship from the heat penetrating the hull. It was, it was, the fire was terrible. Uh, and it damaged our watertight integrity. We had to be resealed before we could go to sea mm -hmm. or we would be taken on water. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you couldn't have that. And of course, uh, Oklahoma was alongside of Maryland and capsized. Uh, and uh, California was first in line and it was full of fire. Uh, I, I don't know, but I heard they finally opened the sea valves and just let it settle. Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania was in the dry dock. And it took a bomb on a quarter deck. And uh, Nevada finally got underway. It was the only battleship to get underway. And uh, of course, when the Japanese saw this, why they hit it pretty hard. And mm -hmm. so it started to sink and they finally ran into ground. Uh, the spot they chose was not good. So they sent some tugs over to pull it out and put it someplace else so it wouldn't block the channel. Uh, 
When you were, uh, when the bombing finally stopped and you were able to get out of your area and get above ground or above, you yeah. know, what do you recall uh, seeing and thinking and what, what did you do from there? Well, uh, first uh, we got uh, fresh air and they broke water tight integrity uh, about two hours after the bombing began. And then we didn't get to go topside until uh, at noon, so it was about four hours. And uh, it, it was almost unbelievable uh, to see all this devastation, uh, fires, and the, the water was all, all on fire. Uh, the gasoline and things. Well, uh, oil from oil. the, yeah, oil. From the uh, ships that were sunk or damaged, burning. And uh, a lot of that fire came from the Arizona. Uh, it, it, I think it just taken on oil the day before. So and it was full. So it, yeah. it, it only fuel, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, it, it was just you wonder how could this happen, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it, it seemed that somebody knew, but nobody seemed to know. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the kind of thing was going on. Well, I, I wondered. Uh, uh, we had some signs, but they apparently were ignored. And all these ships that was in the harbor that day, we were preparing for an admiral's inspection. That's the reason so many ships were there. Okay. Now, I always, uh, I read someplace it was uh, 98 ships. I read someplace there were uh, 150 some ships. I read where there was more than that. It was a huge, huge harbor. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many actually was there, I don't know. It, it seems like other people didn't know exactly either because the num numbers vary, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, before Pearl Harbor, uh, they started to circulate what I call occupational money in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you took a, a dollar bill, it would be stamped in big letters on the back, Hawaii. On the front side, being smaller letters, Hawaii. Uh, when they started to pass that money, I have no idea. Well, then one day I'm coming back from Honolulu, going back to ship, and there's a, a sign on a uh, telephone pole. Let's black out the last blackout. I didn't know they were doing blackouts in Hawaii, hmm. but apparently they were, and it was dated uh, May the 24th. And so it was past that date when I saw the sign, so I removed it as a souvenir. Mm -hmm. And now it's in the Tennessee Museum in Tennessee. Uh, and then there was some other things happened. You, you know, the Army had set up a radar up in the hills mm -hmm. and mountains. And those guys picked up airplanes right. coming in from the north. Mm -hmm. uh, Picture this in your mind, right. coming in from the north. And they reported to their officer in charge, or anyhow, he was in that line. And he said, don't worry about it. Go to breakfast. Shut down, go to breakfast. Mm -hmm. Well, if planes were, and he said, we're expecting planes from the states today. Mm -hmm. The states are not north of, of Hawaii. East, yeah. And they apparently never thought about, well, here's planes coming here, but a plane should be coming from here. Right. Well, and they did come. Some did come, and some were shot down. Oh, some of the planes did come in from the states. Yeah, they, yeah. they did come in from the states, mm -hmm. and uh, but they weren't equipped to, to do any fighting. Uh, so that happened. Well, what else happened? The USS Ward sighted a periscope outside the entrance to the harbor. Mm -hmm. And they were told there was no other vessels in that area. So Ward fired on the periscope, mm -hmm. hit it, sunk it. 
And when they reported the whoever they report to, and I said, well, we can't report that to the fleet till we verify that. Well, then what happened? Yeah. The attack began at uh, what, seven, what, seven, uh, uh, yeah. 7.55. Mm -hmm. And so how could you verify something like that? Yeah. Anyway, uh, it was all too late when they finally woke up yeah. to see what was going on. By that point, yeah, it was too late to do anything. Too to late to do anything. Warn the troops, or now the. I did want to talk about your further experience because your ship was the Tennessee was rehabbed or refurbished. Yes, and well, you, well, we you ended up going into the Pacific uh, yeah, Theater. Yeah, we yep. uh, uh, went into the Navy Yard. I think October of uh, excuse me, nineteen forty-two. And uh, was completely rebuilt. We we looked like uh, Iowa class battleship, except we were much shorter. Mm. Uh, we were what 624 and a half feet long, and our Iowa class battleship was 800 and what 87 feet, something like that. Mm. Huge compared to uh, com compared to what Tennessee was. But anyway, we was completely refurbished. Uh, blisters were put on the side of the ship, to, so if we were hit with a torpedo, it, hopefully it would hit the blister mm. and explode outside the main structure of the ship. Uh, and uh, more more gunnery, 5-inch uh, 38 guns, and, uh, uh, and of course uh, the fire control equipment was updated. Uh, it was uh, most modern uh, available at that time. Mm. Those computers, main battery computers, were completely mechanical. Uh, add, subtract, divide, multiply, mm. new trigonet trigonometric problems. They were fantastic. <laughs> of course, they, the output went into a, a device that sent electrical signal to wherever. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, then after we were we left uh, uh, Bremerton, uh, uh, I think it was the end of May mm -hmm. of uh, '43, and went to the Aleutian Islands. Our uh, job was to take back Kiska. Uh, of course, Tennessee only bombarded. We didn't have any troops on board. Mm -hmm. uh, well, after the bombardment was over, of course, our troops should go ashore. You know those rascals left <laughs> um, before the know. troops got ashore. Oh, okay. They well, did. I, I did uh, read someplace that uh, there was a number of committed suicide. Mm. Uh, the Japanese were great for uh, taking their own life rather than to be uh, captured. Well, and I, uh, I, you know, we only have a few minutes left, but I did want to point out that that was a major problem that you had with the pilots, right, with the kamikaze pilots? Oh, well, when we got into South Pacific, uh, it was a major problem. Uh, uh, Tennessee took a suicide plane uh, off of Okinawa area, and uh, that night, well, there was seven planes made a run on us. We got six. Seventh one got us. Mm -hmm. And we buried 24 people that night. Mm. Uh, a lot of people were hurt, burnt, because uh, it caused a lot of fires when it. Uh, sure. And I was standing about 50 feet away from where the bomb exploded, but I was in inside a shelter, mm. so I, I was somewhat protected. Uh, I, I had volunteered to go topside because we knew we were not going to fire 14-inch guns at airplanes. Right. And uh, so that was quite a sight. And uh, I remember watching one of those suicide planes come in, and it never occurred to me that I was standing in a line of fire. They had not shot down that suicide plane. I would, I would have been hit. Mm -hmm. You know, the they were coming the right at you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, but for some reason or other, I wasn't thinking either. Mm -hmm. 
And so. Uh, well, and, I, I would just imagine in war like that, it, you see these things that you could just never imagine. You know, as, as a civilian, when you go to your day-to-day -day life, and we live in our, you know, in our nice cities here in, in the States, uh, you just never imagine that someone is going to purposefully fly their plane at you and try to... Yes, and, mm -hmm. and we, we got hit several other times. The enemy shoots back, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when we were hit at other times, uh, people were hurt. Uh, uh, guns were damaged. and. Uh, so uh, we made 13 major amphibious, amphibious operations, which were all bombardment except one, one sea battle uh, in Saragawa Straits. Uh, we uh, opened up fire at 10 mile, and uh, Tennessee quit firing 12 minutes and 50 seconds later, and uh, the Japanese fleet was uh, sinking and burning. So you were able to fire shells that far up to 10 yeah, miles oh, away? Oh, yeah. yeah. We could fire probably about 20 miles. Hmm. Uh, so uh, the computers compensated for curvature of the earth and uh, also compensated for temperature as uh, the shell went up and came down. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, we only have a couple minutes to go. And uh, again, you also went on to serve in the Korean War. Yes, well, after I uh, was discharged from the regular Navy, I loved the Navy. Mm -hmm. So I joined the reserves. And you know, uh, when you join the reserves, you're subject to recall. <laughs> and they did. <laughs> so I, I was recalled, but I, this time, instead of going to Korea, I went to the Mediterranean, mm -hmm. which was kind of nice duty, except <laughs> I had to leave my family at home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we operated off the east coast, uh, and, and Shenandoah, Shenandoah was a repair ship. Mm -hmm. So we worked on destroyers, uh, and so I went aboard a number of destroyers to make repairs. Uh, it was an interesting experience. Mm -hmm. Mediterranean is a nice place to take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a lot warmer, I'm sure, than Korea was. Yeah. Yes, I talked to some people who was at Korea, and as one guy told me, he said, I froze when I got to the DMZ, and he said, I was froze, 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 until one day they said, uh, we're going to send you guys to Hawaii to, for a little leave and recreation. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, and, and it was not quite as dangerous as sure. Korea. I, it was bad. Well, we've been talking again with Mr. Robert Bishop. Mr. Bishop is from Austintown, and he is a Pearl Harbor veteran, a World War II veteran, and we really appreciate, thank you very much for your time coming in and talking with us. Well, thank you. I enjoyed that. Thanks. And again, you've been watching Senior Focus. We come to you through Armstrong's Channel 20 and 100. Thank you to Greg Roten from Armstrong, and also thanks to the Austintown Library for allowing us to use their room. Until next time, thank you for watching.